Next uh, speaker, Anne McHugh, is going to be talking. Anne McHugh is going to talk about the right to education. Um, just want to give you a bit of, of Anne's background. Anne is Chief Executive of the Donegal Education and Training Board, uh, it, which is the largest provider of education and training in, in, in County Donegal, with over 26,000 students and learners completing courses annually. The service provides a comprehensive range of courses and supports across the county. Uh, Donegal ETB manages 15 of the 27 post-primary schools in County Donegal and also manages Garton Outdoor Education and Training Centre, Donegal Music Education Partnership and has legal responsibilities for youth work. Anne has spent her entire career in education, initially as a teacher of geography in Gaelic before becoming deputy principal in Crana College, Bancrana, followed by her principalship of uh, Ericle College in uh, Letterkenny. Uh, both jobs were with the former uh, County Donegal VEC and in 2012 she joined as education officer and proceeded to her current role as chief executive in 2016. So Anne, you are our last speaker and we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say on the right to education. Thank you, Denny, and thank you so much to Changemakers for asking me to speak today. I'm really delighted and honoured to be to be involved, and Donegal ETB is really delighted to be involved in the in the Changemakers um, program. Now, I'm going to. Uh, I hope this is going to work. I'm going to share uh, the screen, and you can. Um, is that is that happening? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. That's good. I'm, 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 I always get a little bit nervous at the, when, when, when these technical things have to happen, but thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm really honoured to be involved in, 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 in this uh, project and also, of course, in, with Donegal ETB, I think we have a great opportunity to do things that are really, really important for our communities. And I was really blown away by the speakers today. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm the last of the speakers and each and every one of them have just been fantastic. And I've been nodding along and agreeing with everything that people have been saying. So um, I, I'm, I, have, I have a good few slides, but don't panic people. It's not quite as bad as it seems. I'm, I'm not going to read each one in detail, but I just wanted to give you an idea of, uh, of where we are in the county. And I suppose we'd like to say we're everywhere in the county, uh, as well as all these centers and schools. We, we sort of get involved with, with local groups as well, as many of you will know. So so we, we have a good reach, I suppose, is, is, is what I'm saying. I'm ever, the, I, I'm ever the positive person, and I think we, we've heard some very sad stories today and some very sad things have been said and, and all of that, but we do have to remain positive. And, and, and I think that has to be the overriding thing through all this. And I'll, I'll talk a wee bit more about that uh, later. Um, Martin Luther King uh, said it well, and I, I like to keep thinking that it's, it's ever bending, things are ever bending towards justice. We do have a way to go, there's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, it's Article 26, I suppose, is the one that I was focusing in, of, in on, on the, on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Lofty ideals and fantastic things to be moving towards. But, you know, I, I just picked out a few words there, education shall be free. And yes, to all intents and purposes, education is free on paper, uh, but a lot of you will know it's not entirely and completely free. And I might speak a, a, a wee bit more uh, about that as well. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing there about higher education being equally accessible to all on the basis of merit. I think that's something that we in Ireland haven't got to grips with. Uh, higher education is not equally and absolutely accessible to everybody. And I think, you know, the, the research bears that out. Um, I'm going to I'm going to fly on. I, I was thinking um, actually about I, I was watching a program last night. It's 109 years since the Titanic uh, sank, and I was watching a little program last night, and they were talking about you know who got, who got into the lifeboats and the steerage passengers, the the, the people down the the bottom of the ship who were essentially, I suppose, uh, Irish. They were uh, economic migrants. They were heading off for, for a better life in New York. The gates were closed to them. They, they, a lot of them didn't get on to, 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 the, to the lifeboats. The, the lifeboats were, were reserved for other people. And I suppose I was thinking, gosh, 109 years later, maybe not an awful lot uh, has changed, uh, you know, but we'll, 
will keep going. Uh, education is an absolute fundamental human right. And I just think it's the power of education to lift people out of, of poverty. And I was listening really intently to, to what Esther uh, was, was reporting there herself and, and indeed Anne uh, earlier on. And I think probably it's the one thing that all politicians agree on is this power of education. And, and you know, it was a really big decision in 1966 for <clears throat> a minister in our government to open a, a second level education to, to everybody. And that really has made a huge difference to this country. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard to believe it's over 50 years now. Uh, but I, I, I just want, I just underlined there, if all adults completed secondary education globally, the number of poor people could be reduced by more than half. And I was quite astounded by that, uh, to, to think that if we could all get up to, to more second level education, how, how, how much more wonderful our, our, the world would be for, for everybody. And I think Esther has really outlined really well the gender gap issues in, in, in relation to her work um, with uh, uh, the, now, now that the, uh, Denny, you're gonna give out to me now, the, the, the name of your group has, has gone out of my head, but you know what it is. <laughs> um, so I suppose the, the last thing I wanted to look at on that slide was this equality of opportunity. And we've all talked about it all, all morning, universal access and enforceable and monitored quality standards. And I think that in terms, in terms of education and in terms of everything to do with, with COVID, I think what, what has happened is the people who were already on the margins remained on the margins and came under even more pressure than, than those people who weren't. And I, I have a few examples of, of, of that later. I'm not going to delay too long on, on that slide that the right to education, all of these things um, are, are really important. And I, I would look there at the fundamental education for individuals who have not completed education. We, we in Donegal to be obviously do an awful lot of work there with our community groups and with our basic education service, etc. Et, et We're also heavily involved in technical and vocational, we, we call it FET, uh, further education and training here, uh, and, and trying to promote that rather than everybody going to higher education. I think that's a, it's a conversation that's on ongoing in, in Ireland at the moment, our obsession with higher education. And, you know, I think we're trying to, to, to let people know that there are other options, that it's not all about uh, higher education. Uh, the quality and uh, quality teaching and supplies for teachers. We're, we're really lucky in Ireland. We have an absolutely outstanding quality in our in our teaching profession. We have our teaching council now, which also, which also helps with uh, standards. Um, I, I, I read this with interest, a report on the impact uh, on, on the right to, to education. And again, they're, they're asking us to look, and again, at a local context, and Dr. Ryan said it's a community thing, the dynamics of play that led to increased discrimination in the enjoyment of the right to education. And, you know, I mean, we, we all know what they are. People just didn't have that structure at home. They didn't have space at home to, to, to work. Uh, problems with broadband you know, children who were already struggling uh, and, and older people who just didn't have then that structure of being at school and having support and those wraparound supports that they get at school. And I think all of those things have impacted. The school meals, uh, several people have spoken about the school meals and thankfully we were able to continue that to some extent, not fully, but uh, to the best possible extent. Um, I'm conscious of the time, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on. We, we're obviously funded nationally from government, so uh, we, we followed the, the national responses. And the, the key thing is there, we had to maximize contact for vulnerable students where possible. That's what we were asked to do. It's what we would have done anyway. So for example, our, our, our more marginalized students some literacy students, our youth reach students, students with, with disabilities. In after each, you know, we've had, I suppose we've had so many lockdowns now. So after every lockdown, when we were getting people back again, the, those students were the ones that were always the first to return to, to site. They, they, they were always uh, put, put on the top of the queue, I suppose. Uh, you know, so, uh, somebody was talking earlier about how things have changed with, with, with COVID. 
And, you know, I, I was reflecting all of this stuff is stuff that we've been looking for. And, you know, I was asking myself, would this have happened? And, you know, only for COVID a lot. With, I mean, all of this stuff happened. It's stuff that we have been looking for, stuff, stuff that's really important and, and it needs to be done. But it all happened. And I think it was Dr. Ryan said it. It all happened because we were in a crisis. Every, everybody suddenly got, got what, what they were entitled to and, 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 and what they deserve to get. So uh, we, th there was a mitigating against educational disadvantage fund nationally, and that fund uh, we we um, were able to support people. We were able to support thirty community groups. Um, we're working on uh, digital hubs uh, within our FET centres and other learning spaces, and just simple things like FET centres getting uh, a C pen reader to to provide uh, technology to dyslexic students and these software licenses you know and they're simple things but but they really made a difference during all our our, our lockdowns uh, and, a, and a really positive thing with with all of this was we were able to continue with our student engagement and with our teaching and learning and that and that was obviously the key thing for us um more stuff the the suite of chromebooks for our youth reach centers uh, was was purchased and Basically, what we tried to do in Donegal to be every spare laptop and computer and device that we were able to get out into the hands of somebody who needed it, we did it. Uh, we had some that were maybe in centres that we were able to loan, and we were also able to to buy uh, an, a number of them as well there. And you can see that, and it was it it, it was really important to do that. Our key thing is uh, that we must be able to support our students to the maximum extent possible. And that was really, really key for us. And it was what our staff worried about, where the students go, going to be able to cope. And, and that was, that's down to second level students and our older students, because I suppose we're, we're, we're dealing with the whole range uh, of, of age groups. And it was really important that everybody, as much as possible, got that chance to continue with their work. So, Here's a sort of a little bit of an, of an example of things that we tried to do. We, we made sure that we communicated with people. It is so important. I think that has been echoed today as well. So important that people are listened to. A lot of our students reported back afterwards that sometimes the tutor from Donegal ETB or wherever was the only person that they heard from all week, that that phone call really made a difference to people. Uh, and it may not have been about the work or the coursework, but it may have also obviously been, how are you doing? How are things? How are you feeling, et cetera? And those kinds of things, those simple little things where we're able to reach out into everybody in our community and to keep people buoyed up because it really was a difficult time for people. We posted stuff. If people weren't good on the, on the technology end of it, we posted stuff out to people. Uh, our staff um, have been upskilled to within an inch of their lives, I'd say at this stage, technology enhanced learning, and they have just been superb. There has been a huge amount of work done. And again, you say, and they all said, this is what we wanted, this is what we needed, but it took a pandemic to, to get people up to speed. And, and that has been really positive for us as well. I mentioned the devices uh, earlier. We gave out as many devices as we possibly could to people. Uh, assessment is important because that's important for our quality. And we, we, you know, we, we couldn't sort of risk our quality being reduced just because people were learning in a different way. So that was important. And we worked again on, on, at a national level to make sure that people were still getting uh, the, the, the quality assessment uh, that they were entitled to, because that's important for them when they move on as well to, to further courses, et cetera. And we spoke to our students and our staff. We surveyed them, we asked them what was working, what wasn't working, and, uh, and I think that was really important. And we got some really good material back and some, some, some really good ideas from students and staff. And again, I was thinking about what, what, what Dr. Ryan said about it starts and ends with communities and you have to link with the people in, in, in the communities. And I think we did that really well. Uh, our school meals continued. I mentioned that earlier. Our school, mean, school meals program continued. It was, it was in a different guise. Uh, people, we left stuff in shops and people went in and collected it and that kind of thing. But we managed to keep the school meals going, which we felt what was very important. And indeed, I suppose uh, government uh, helped us with that as well. What are we continuing to do? Uh, and many of you on the call today will, will know that we had our community education seminar. It was online. Uh, it was very successful and people really appreciated it. 
Uh, we're continuing with our recognition of prior learning and we're working in particular with people in the care sector at, at the moment, who, which is obviously uh, very topical. Um, and, and we've been doing a good bit of work with with people in trying to recognize the work that they've done. They may not have a certificate to say that, that, that they, they have all these skills, but they certainly have been working for many, many years and we're working just to, to make sure that that's recognized for them. Uh, we're, uh, our, our refugee resettlement program is continuing and we've done various pieces of work uh, during last year and continuing with, with those associations that, uh, that you see in the screen there, the Deaf Hear, Irish Wheelchair and Donegal Down Syndrome, the Age Friendly uh, Alliance, um, and obviously we're involved with the, our community education forum. The Universal Design for Learning approach has been really good for, for, for all the work we've been doing and, and we're really delighted to be involved with that. And we're, we're doing an increasing number of CPD courses on the whole Universal Design for Learning approach because it fits, it fits really well, I think. Uh, we've had we had challenges and you know uh, one of them obviously is the access to broadband. It's probably a challenge that is uh, is beyond uh, a lot of us here, but but certainly I think it's something that that we need to continue to highlight because you can have all the digital devices you you like, but if you can't link up uh, on on broadband, that's a difficulty. Uh, the digital devices was a challenge. We feel we've made good progress there and there's still a good bit of work uh, to be done. And just that whole thing about isolation where people really appreciated the phone call from um, uh, tutors and, and people involved in services. And I, I think people really, really did appreciate that. And I suppose, uh, more than anything, we, we kept going back to our vision and our, and our mission, you know, and it's really important to have something to cling to when, when times are, are, are difficult. And, you know, the quality is so important. And, and I said that I can't emphasize that enough. It's really important that we maintained uh, quality in, in allowing people to access education. The mission, I mean, I, I was looking at words like accessible, inclusive, safe and caring, and we were certainly tested and I think everybody was tested in, in, in those areas during the last year. Um, you know, we, I, I think we have worked well and we have worked really, really tirelessly. An excellent staff is so, so important. Uh, staff were just with, with us all the way, teachers, and, and I'm not just talking about Donegal ATB, I'm just, I, I think in general, um, in particular with the second lockdown, I think people were much more used to the whole uh, emergency remote teaching and, and all of that. And I think if there's anything that uh, we've learned uh, during all of this is that education is a vital public service and it needs to remain a public service not to be privatized or going going down that road it's a public service and as, as an ETB here obviously we're publicly funded and we really promote that notion of education being a, a public service and it's so so vital and I think we have all seen that uh, you know in terms of, of children and adults who, who were trying to continue to learn in really difficult circumstances um, at times. I suppose the the the, the positives, that, and there are positives, and I will continue to, to remain positive, and I've mentioned the positives. We got an awful lot of stuff done that, we, that mightn't have happened. Uh, we got a lot of CPD, a lot of professional uh, development, and we were able to harness, and I think everybody was able to harness, that massive reservoir of goodwill and passion that people have for other people. And it really is heartening to see that, uh, you, you know, and, and, and it is true, when, when our backs were against the wall, we were able to, to deliver. Uh, it's, it's, it's not over yet, and we still have a way to go, but I think we've learned a lot for, uh, from, from our experience. Of, of being in the middle of a pandemic. And let's hope we're very, very well out uh, the other side now. So, Denny, I, I'll pass back to you. Thank you.